Nice to speak to you all. Um, so thank you all for joining me and uh, thank you to Aspire and Emma for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today. Uh, there are so many inspiring people who are all agree that arts are a fundamental uh, part of giving every child a voice and form of creative expression. Our schools have a vast spectrum of children from many different backgrounds and cultures with many different needs. Art enables them. It allows them to explore and gives them freedom to create what they see inside their imaginations. Through art, we develop skills beyond the subject that supports the foundations of their education. They develop problem-solving skills. It encourages them to take risk. It supports critical thinking. And they learn that all opinions are valid, that art is subjective. Most importantly, uh, it's great for their well-being. And also, it's fun. Um, so, a little bit about me. My greatest passion as a podgy child who had no interest in kicking a ball in the 70s and 80s were drawing, reading and writing. So reading gave me the opportunity as a young artist to draw and my imagination would see what my imagination could create from words. Writing uh, gave me the opportunity to create what I saw inside my own imagination. If I reflect on my childhood and my own education, what I learned about art, I learned at home. Art in school was virtually non-existent. My four art projects that I remember in primary school were drawing the Thames Barrier, making, uh, making, uh, painting the headmasters for Fiesta, uh, making an ancient Roman pot using sausages of clay stuck on top of each other and carving an owl out of a tile. Uh, we did have a kiln, we had a potter's wheel, but they were never used. Um, art was very low in the pecking order uh, in terms of my education in school, and there was very little to inspire a creative mind. So I want to talk to you today about inspiring young learners through challenge and aspiration, about how important it is to open up artistic opportunities and reflect the world we now live in. Anthony Gormley argues that children needs, need the arts just as much as they need science, maths and English. It is not possible to become a fulfilled human being in this astonishing world that we now live in without knowing what to imagine, make and do. Wise words and uh, an ideal shared by many, everyone who is here today. Um, and I think it's wonderful uh, that we are now seeing arts becoming such a valued part of education. So inspiring our children with art, within art means introducing them to artists and artworks that inspire awe and wonder, artists from all walks of life, ethnicities and the LGBTQ community. It is essential we celebrate the children's achievements, creating a school environment that immerses them within the subject, giving them access to tools and materials that are exciting to work with, opportunities to collaborate with professional artists and discuss their subject matter. It's about choosing topics that children can identify with and relate to, and relate to the world that they live in today. Children need to see their work as valued, as an achievement, as something that we can all celebrate. So my art specialist role gave me complete freedom to explore new artists and develop my subject area. So with the full support of my head teacher, I began developing the art curriculum we have in place today. Experience tells me that the best outcomes have come from all moments from the children when they are captivated by something. So when researching and choosing artists, I begin by looking for the wow factor. Will the children be inspired by the work? the artist and the narrative behind it? Are there clear examples of what I want the children to learn in terms of skill and technique and ways it can be applied? Is it accessible? How can we adapt it and explore our own ideas? We often look at three or four artists at a time identifying different techniques, discussing what we can see to form ideas. So the early stages of exploration and inference are all an essential part of the initial process. Vocabulary, I tailor fit to each year group, but teach them not only the correct vocabulary, but uh, with the young, I give them visual cues and relatable words. So uh, contouring, for example, becomes smiles and frowns. 
uh, when we're painting, stippling becomes splodges. When teaching adults for Art Seasons, I was predominantly teaching adults who hadn't drawn for years. Uh, many had retired and wanted to rediscover their love of the subject. So I draw parallels with the adults to teaching children and I decided to begin, begin filtering those techniques to the skills I was teaching children to extend and challenge. It was here I began to develop the children's achieve, uh, develop, uh, I saw a dramatic development in the children's achievements. Um, children of all abilities were eager to learn new skills taught to adult learners. So I would like to talk about the fundamental importance of drawing. Um, I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you now. Um, so just bear with me one second. So I'm going to start off by talking to you about drawing. So drawing is an essential part of the development process. We provide tools, tips and step-by-step -step instruction for younger children and children who lack confidence or need additional support. Neil Cohn states, art is a universal language in his article explaining I can't draw, which uh, has parallels between the structure and development of language and drawing. So from birth until puberty, children consistently make progress in drawing ability Beyond, children begin to stagnate unless they are stimulated through puberty and into adulthood. Those that continue to make progress after this period are seen as gifted and talented. Japan is the only exception. Children there continue to make progress without stagnation, which is attributed to the high levels of children who read comics and copy the drawings. When we ourselves are emerging artists, we draw what inspires us. So children draw superheroes, favourite characters from stories, animals. There are step-by-step -step videos easily accessible to children who learn by copying, following instructions step-by-step. -step. I have seen incredible results using this process in school in Key Stage 1, where children will follow the steps to draw a bee, for example, starting with drawing a circle. Children then draw four circles together, um, the two of the back, at the back become the abdomen and we start to refine the shapes before adding the wings and legs. So we then have a class full of bees of various shapes and sizes in sketchbooks. So the next step is adaption and person, uh, personalization. Where do bees live? What do they do? Uh, then the magic happens as 30 children begin to draw narratives for their bee. Suddenly they're drawing hives, flowers, honey pots, swarms, their imaginations take over. Beyond key stage one, as we move through the school and challenge becomes greater, demonstration is needed to show possibilities. We look at how we use skills in sketchbooks and again apply to our own ideas. In key stage two, children learn how to draw the features of a face. We use shading. Uh, we learn how to build the sides of a nose without drawing a shape with lines by using a smudge stick or cotton bud. It is a total eureka moment for the children. We learn the correct position for the eyes, how to build a jawline, layering to build shadows and how to create light reflections. With painting, we begin by learning about the colour spectrum, blending complementary colours, application, then move on to mixed media, different washes we can achieve, which brushes to use, what brush strokes can be used for what purpose, how to create texture, printing, exploring palette knives and tools, paint effects. All these skills and techniques are developed from key stage one and developed as we move through the school. When children are given the opportunity to experiment with these skills early on, they develop an awareness and the confidence applying it to their own ideas. So here we have some collaborative work we've done in the school. So they're another wonderful way of children exploring what they've learned and working together to apply what they have learned by sharing ideas with each other. Uh, 
also a useful way as a teacher to be able to stand back and see how they're doing, which uh, is encouraging the children to participate. Um, if you have a look at the first example here, we can see uh, a tornado. Uh, this was done with year two. Um, we did it in acrylic and we used uh, crushed CD-ROMs to create uh, the tornado. The next three are examples from our climate emergency exhibition where the children were all given uh, tools, uh, they were given glue guns, they were given all sorts of materials that parents had donated, huge cardboard boxes. Um, and the first one uh, is a, an example of uh, the world becoming overpopulated. And you can see here, every child that was involved has included their handprint. Then we had one uh, that is representing forest fires. It was very close to the time that Australia was having huge forest fires along the, uh, the coast. And then the last one, we have rising sea levels, uh, something that the children were very concerned about when they were doing their research on climate change. Pupil Voice showed us that children appreciate demonstration and step-by-step -step support as it enables them to apply the skills that they, uh, and they love the challenge activities that enable them to achieve the uh, incredible outcomes and develop techniques that make the process easier. Through Pupil Voice, we also discovered how much the children valued having an art room to work in. Here we have our art room that's uh, on this occasion been used to uh, celebrate our sculpture exhibition. It was one of the rooms that we used uh, when we were exhibiting the work. Um, fantastic to have an art room. It's a great room in terms of the light, the natural light that we have. And as I said before, it really does, the children really appreciate uh, that they are able to use that space. Also, we visit uh, art galleries to see beautiful examples of art. So we bring the gallery to the school. I think the immersion aspect is incredibly important for the children in terms of valuing the work that they do in school. So um, we frame a huge amount of the children's work. Um, lower down in the school, children want to know how to paint a nebula or draw clouds or how to draw a real face. They want to achieve those aspirational results. Um, so we exhibit as much of the work as possible, uh, including uh, Phila de Barlow, the art uh, sculptor who came in uh, and created a sculpture with the children during the sculpture ex exhibition that we did. Um, and we had our whole climate emergency exhibition, which turned the entire building into an exhibition space. They're fabulous. There's an incredible energy around the school weeks before as the children's excitement levels build. Uh, and we also have a third exhibition planned for the end of this school year. Here's our gallery space. <clears throat> so here's some of the work the children uh, have completed, which is framed. Um, and again, we rotate that so children have the opportunity to see their work valued in such a nice way. One of the other things that we did, uh, this was starting through lockdown, was we started to immerse the school environment in murals. So uh, through the first lockdown, we started with the playgrounds and we began painting the school environment to encourage the children and to lift the space. We were quite an old Victorian building, so uh, we wanted to give some colour to the children's environment to help uh, with their well-being. Um, you'll see some bubbles here. Hopefully we've seen the last of those. <laughs> and we've also now started working inside the school. So uh, this is an ongoing process. So this is the library. Uh, so the library was being refurbished. So we decided uh, to add some murals to the children's library. And we also included the school corridors. So. Here we have uh, year six, the, uh, the year six uh, corridor. We didn't tell them this was going to be happening. So um, when they returned from lockdown and they came back, uh, they witnessed, they could see this uh, cascading paint flow that goes all the way down the stairs. I can't tell you how many children thanked me when they came in the building. Um, and loved the fact that their, their school environment on the inside was transforming into this space where they had so much colour uh, and so much artwork to appreciate. Uh, here, for example, now we have uh, 
child designs the children created. So these were all based on our school values. Uh, and they all did a design and uh, we surprised them by painting them uh, large scale inside uh, the year four corridor, where the year four, year four children come into school. All of the children really have appreciated uh, all of this artwork that we see now around the school um, and are looking forward to what other rooms and what other corridors that we are going to transform in the name of art uh, to improve the school environment. The other benefit of lockdown for me uh, was seeing the skills applied at home. So uh, we tried to think about activities the children could do uh, that had resort that they had the resources for at home. So photography was quite uh, an easy, easily accessible uh, medium for the children uh, at home. Um, what was lovely for me as the art specialist was I actually saw the skills that I was teaching the children in school applied outside of school. Uh, with some wonderful paintings and some beautiful drawings based on narratives. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the developing techniques. So here in Key Stage 1, in Years 1 and 2, um, we use demonstration as a step-by-step -step process, which is in small steps. Uh, as I said to you before about the bee, if you look in the first couple of pictures, uh, children start to develop a, an awareness of shape, uh, of shade and tone. Um, and also we try and include context. So in terms of planets, for example, we can see here that children are developing how to draw a shadow, uh, how to draw something disappearing behind an object. Um, and we have some snowmen, snowmen here. So again, developing shade and tone. We've got some footprints here disappearing off into the into the distance. We do a lot of work with shape, how to create shadows, um, and again, contextualizing. And we also look at abstract work. So this is uh, a, lands a landscape by one of our uh, talented uh, year two artists. So children explore using lots of different materials uh, and different techniques and, and the purposes. And we try to, uh, we, we consolidate the skills and build upon them when we revisit them. Uh, in uh, low key stage two, in years three and four, children explore new techniques and build upon what they've learned. This includes paint effects and washes, how color is used and different application methods. In drawing, children begin to develop proportion uh, to learn how to use new sketching techniques. We can see contouring here, for example. Uh, this is a, a drawing of um, uh, uh, microscopic images. This was of coral. Um, and also develop proportion to learn how to use new sketching techniques and to apply dimension to objects. Children learn about the different forms uh, of, uh, of sculpture. Um, here we have an example that was uh, uh, the Beatles uh, walking across uh, Abbey Road, uh, which was an example of British icons. Uh, and I believe that's a pound coin there, so it looks like a sun. Um, and if we move into Upper key stage two, years five and six, uh, the skills become um, a lot uh, slightly uh, more challenging uh, here. Um, so we consolidate and develop the painting techniques that we've already uh, looked at, uh, and we use prior knowledge of what we've learned um, to experiment with media. In drawing, children use skills learned to further develop proportion, sketching techniques, dimension, and perspective drawing for different contexts, and we look at perspective. So we start to teach two-point perspective and how to use a vanishing point uh, to create depth within a room. Uh, we've got a lovely example, really beautiful example of, of layering uh, here uh, by one of our year six boys. Uh, and we did a big project on anatomy. So children had great fun combining different types of anatomy drawing together. Here are some examples of developing a face. So here we have uh, the nose being built up with layers of shadow and the lips. Uh, and there we have the context of uh, Henry VIII. Um, none of his wives were present for that piece of art. Um, and here we have uh, uh, a piece using acrylics with palette knives. This was uh, our Windrush uh, project where we looked at the work of uh, 
Frank Bowling. Uh, so we had lots of really beautiful uh, colour mixing going on with the Year 6 children with those projects. When we developed the techniques, um, we use a broad range. Um, here, for example, uh, we have examples of contouring used to create the shape and form of a heart, of a human heart. Uh, we, de we demonstrate how to draw bodies, uh, we teach the children about proportion, and then they have activities that enable them to put that into context. Here are some of the sketching techniques that children start. These, these start from uh, year, year three, these ones in particular, um, and some examples of in, in the children's books. Here we have uh, an example of some painting which has moved through the school. So last year, we, uh, at the end of last year, we did a project where we learnt how to paint uh, galaxies and nebulas. It started with year six, um, but all the children then in the school wanted to draw galaxies and nebulas and paint galaxies and nebulas. So here we have an example from reception, then another uh, from year three, and then uh, year five, and year six. Um, it's quite a good demonstration to show the progression of painting skills as they've moved through the school. Early years is completely explore, it's complete exploration and discovery. So uh, children in the outside areas have access to different paints, uh, different brushes uh, and different tools and are allowed to express themselves completely um, uh, the, to express their imaginations uh, in whichever way they, they see fit. We also do some collaborative work. So here we've got children working together uh, because they wanted to create a rainforest. So we found lots of materials and started to learn how to use the paintbrushes. Uh, and here we have some examples of printing. Uh, the children wanted to, uh, we, we developed a project and children wanted to uh, create some flowers. So we did some printing with them. Uh, this is year one, examples of year one work. So we have portraits inspired by Kahindi Wiley uh, and the illustrations of Lauren Child. So we do have a resemblance uh, there of Charlie and Lola. Um, we looked at uh, uh, moons uh, from uh, Georges Mier's uh, Moonscapes from his uh, film, the one of the first films created. And we also looked at landscapes in year one. So the children learnt how to draw various different landscapes. We demonstrate how to draw mountains, for example. And then their final outcome was creating uh, landscapes inspired by fisheye photography, where the children used palette knives for the first time in year one. In drawing, here's an example of uh, uh, an animal that they have drawn, where we have the horizon line dis disappearing behind. Uh, and really lovely shadow work. We have uh, year two here. So again, lots of uh, broad, a broad range of ideas. So uh, we have ob observational drawing of an apple, which uh, I took a bite out of to make it slightly more challenging for the children to try and draw the bite mark. Uh, we have dreamscapes, uh, narratives. So obviously we can see here a young lady from year two has uh, used the scream as her inspiration. And we have some lovely cubism examples from Picasso. Uh, here we have a uh, year three work. Uh, so we have uh, an example of um, volcanoes. We have uh, Russo's jungle pictures and we have cityscapes by Stephen Wiltshire. Uh, here we have uh, different animal studies by year four. So we have acrylic paintings, pencil work. Uh, we have some sculpture and micro uh, images of um, uh, micro uh, organisms. And year five, so here's an example of perspective. Um, we have more of the galaxy, some portrait work and pattern work inspired by artist Jill Pelto. Um, here we have more examples of anatomy, we have um, uh, landscape painting, we have um, uh, some lovely abstract work here that was uh, neural pathways within the brain, um, beautiful blending work in terms of shadow in uh, a, a narrative that was inspired by the arrival. And another form of anatomy, children wanted to choose their favourite toy, so here we have Chewbacca. 
uh, and his skeleton, which I'm sure you've never seen before. Um, I think I'm going to, uh, I do, there was a couple of other slides there, but I'm going to uh, stop with the slides um, because I can see that I'm getting very close to the end of my slot. Um, I just wanted to say a really big thank you for everybody uh, coming to uh, uh, coming to listen to me uh, talk to you about uh, art at Dalmain. Um, and if we do have any spare time, anyone uh, who would like to ask me anything uh, or say anything, please uh, now uh, choose the moment now to to say something. Um, Wayne, I just want to say, I really love the examples of progression that you've shown um, from right from reception to, um, was it year one? I can't remember. Yes. Year one, two, six. Yeah. I can't see you, by the way. You've gone all kind ah, of... Ah, let me see if I can get myself back. <laughs> Start video. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. No, it here. just... Um, Hi. Yeah, no, it's 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 really hard. It's really interesting to see that um, you know that your drawing technique with them. You know that when you sort of started doing adult education and then you went into primary education and your art specialist there. So it's kind of interesting. It's it's sort of quite sophisticated, but it seems to be quite natural in the way that they're using those those uh, techniques now. You know, it's it's a way that they're 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 dipping into their art using you know dipping into those techniques that you've you've given them. I think. Yeah? Um, I, one thing I've, uh, w uh, that I was quite um, nervous about initially when I first started trying different techniques was, you know, uh, is this something that, you know, I will see once and then, you know, it will be something that, you know, the children will no longer have a go at or try. But what I've actually seen, particularly with the lockdown as well, with children working from home, is that, um, that, that they... They, they take such pleasure in learning some of these skills, particularly the skills that, um, that they know I, I've taught adults in, 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 in adult education. For them, it's such an enormous sense of pride that they are, they are able to actually uh, develop these techniques and then achieve these outcomes. I very frequently get emails from parents uh, with photographs of, chil of work that children have done at home um, where they've used the technique. So... Um, because we revisit and consolidate through as we move up through the school and we usually do a couple of activities initially that kind of work on those skills as a as a reminder they've they've really become uh, embedded within the children's uh, skill set um there's some very nice comments um uh well thank you all so much uh for 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 coming um, 